What's up everyone, welcome to another episode of The Strength Classroom. Today I'm showing you a example of dynamic effort upper body workout. Now this is, I don't want to say a fairly new method, but most people associate dynamic effort work when using barbell lift to be nine sets of three for the upper body. And typically, that's what it was. But uh, I don't know what year it was. I'm going to say it was definitely within the last 10 years where Louis Simmons and the guys at Westside Barbell started doing five sets of five with similar percentages. Now, you're not going to get max speed, but it's a good like in between method, let's say. So I was supersetting my incline bench with what's called tactical cleans. I have no clue. Oh, no, wait, these aren't tactical cleans. That was a different day. Those are just uh, kettlebell cleans alternating between arms. Uh, just to get a little bit of conditioning in there, bouncing back and forth between the barbell movement and the kettlebell movement. Did five sets of five uh, for both. I did five reps each arm with the kettlebells and then five sets of five with 150 pounds on the bar and then black bands. Now, my progression for this when it comes to the incline bench, black bands, next week I'm going to do the light bands, which are purple. I believe that's what they're called. And then the final week is going to be the green bands. I believe those are called the average bands. I don't really remember the names. I just remember the colors and the uh, resistances. Uh, if you do have kettlebells, a great way to mix them in, especially if you don't have heavy ones, is to do stuff like this. To alternate back and forth with your classical, traditional barbell movements, dumbbell movements, whatever you want to call them. Uh, it's it's a great way to get more volume in. It's a great way to get just more movement in throughout your workout. And it shouldn't interfere as long as you're not supersetting, I don't know, incline bench with kettlebell overhead presses. Like those two very similar movements. Whereas the kettlebell clean right here, it doesn't really work the muscles that the incline bench does. In fact, it works the opposite muscles. So... It doesn't interfere. If it interferes, your work capacity is just stupid low. Let's put it that way. I'm not very proficient with kettlebells. I am getting better. The, the movements are just so complex and so... So, that's all, that, that's all I have to say. That I feel like you can never get uh, proficient enough at them. So then I'm doing dumbbell row sets of 15 to 20 reps. Uh, always strap up with your dumbbell rows if you're going heavy enough. I, I can't suggest this enough. You can do some sets without straps, but don't let those sets be the ones that you progress with. So for example, if you can't do a certain weight without straps, don't let that be your ceiling. Don't let that be your limit. Don't let your grip limit your back is your grip that important to you yes then your dumbbell row should not be your main grip builder it should be other exercises so yes your dumbbell row has the potential to build your grip especially when you do it for like high reps but don't let it be your main grip builder and then at the end of this upper body workout i am doing an upper body circuit it has been something that I have been enjoying recently, just to get a lot of work in, a big pump in the arms, in the shoulders. It's just something I've been enjoying doing, and I suggest everyone kind of gives it a shot, especially if you're in a phase, which I am right now, to raise your work capacity. So I'm doing a lot of sets, a lot of reps, lowering the rest with each workout. So those are just some extensions I was fooling around with. Wasn't really a big fan, to be honest. I'll just do standard dumbbell or um, easy curl extensions. These are Zotman curls. They're really good for the brachialis, brachioradialis, forearm because I have the fat grip on there. It's just a good exercise. I can't remember who I learned these from. If you could see, I'm curling outward at first and then doing kind of like a reverse hammer curl on the way down. It's a really, a really, really interesting exercise. And then I did some kettlebell lateral raises, like I mentioned in a previous video. These are my favorite variation of a lateral raise. Just because of where the weight is located, I feel they are superior 
for my build and my structure to the dumbbell variation. Um, I And I, I don't know why, to be honest. I actually don't know why I prefer them over the dumbbell variation because there's really no reason. An implement is an implement. And then I just finished off with some neck. I honestly don't even remember what I did. My neck training is very unstructured at the moment. But if you would like structured neck training, go to my stand store. Link will be in the description. Click on the uh, link and you can get the neck training ebook all by itself. I'm having a sale the whole July. Or if you want, you can get the muscle building beginner ebook paired with the neck training ebook. I think that's the best value. I don't know why more people don't buy that. I figured that would be my most popular ebook. Uh, it's selling, but just not at the rate I thought it would for the value. There's the breakdown for the workout. And as always, have yourself a great day, ladies and gentlemen.